Yo, what up? It's your boy Slimtronic5000, and today I am joined by my very dear friend who is a singer. Uh, she's a songwriter, uh, an advocate. She's a trendsetter, and she's the only person I know who can answer the question, Hey, who ate all the p***? It was me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so stoked to hang out with her and talk about it, so come on in. What's Water's up? Water's fine. <laughs> you can jump right in, yeah, water is fine With a fool in a pool, you in it to be sad Take all your words and all your strife As you talk about this Gulf Coast life Slim and go swimming Southwest for a living You lose all your clothes and all your as always, this episode features a look at the weather, bad impressions, a conversation with someone special and unique, and of course, we'll see if Slim can get them to grab their chin without them realizing, and more. I'm your announcer, Gabby Ray. And it's time for another episode from everyone's lovable, creepy, bearded Jamoke. It's Slimmy Go Swimming with Sheena Brooke. Ladies and gentlemen, my dear friend, Sheena Brooke. Hi. You're totally off camera. I am? Oh, I got excited. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jenny, it's it's, it's it's because... The... I'm just going to swim while you talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're a singer, a I am. performer. Yeah. What's that like? It's great. I mean, it's I've done a lot of jobs in my life. I think being able to do what I love for a living is a gift, uh, and I like to always remind myself of that. I think people measure success differently. Getting to do what I love makes me a success. So. Is this your favorite job you've ever? This is done? my favorite job I've ever had. What's your What's your least favorite job you ever had? <laughs> Uh, being a pastor, <laughs> and let me tell you, I've that'll had some preach. <laughs> that'll preach. I've worked uh, construction, landscape. I've done a lot of really gay jobs, including being a pastor. <laughs> 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 I feel like you're gonna really regret having me on this show. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Um, you gotta see Tyler's episode. <laughs> Some weirdness goes oh, on perfect, in that perfect, one. Perfect. Uh, what What age did you start singing? Honestly, like I think I was like um, in high school, truthfully, because like I might have sang a little bit in choir, but like I wasn't the person like leading worship in my church. My world was very small, and only what was at church. But like I didn't start singing in church until later on. The girl that everybody liked, she was like the youth group worship leader, and she was gone one day, and I filled in for. Her. And I was like, oh, I think I'm good at this. And it was fun, yeah. And so I started singing, singing more. And then around that same time, I was actually in a rap group. And we would go to, like, detention centers and rap right, and stuff like right. that. And I actually really enjoyed that, but, you know, yo, yo, yo. You, you enjoyed going to prisons? Yeah. We <laughs> had a lot of really cool kids, like, in, these, in the DJJ. And I think, uh, despite the fact that, like, I have a different viewpoint uh, on my belief system now, I feel like I learned a lot about just how most of those kids are just good kids yeah. with bad circumstances yeah. and all they want is someone to believe in them and love them yeah. and, you know yeah. and I, so I, I still like, look back fondly on that time that, that portion of my life which is cool uh, have you done anything like that since or have you considered doing anything like that since not really I think you know the tumultuous storm of situation storm of my life and coming out and all of that changing kind of steps you away from that I think I wouldn't even know how to get back in there now as a without that religious aspect um, kind of pushing me forward so I feel like I just try to be an advocate I think in my daily life like to say like to be who I am to be proud of who I am put out a lot of you know kindness yeah. and uh, a lot of be yourself I could, totally, I could totally see you doing a songwriter round in a lady prison. Yeah, I actually, this is a good idea. Right. Let's see if we can make it happen. I think it'd be great. Yeah. I would come play. Yeah. 
I'd be like, ladies, 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 let me sing you a song. <laughs> I feel like they'd be like, that guy's not allowed in here. What yeah, no, got? no. You don't <laughs> I'm just put fucking. Me in, a, in, a, in a lady person. <laughs> yeah, um. they probably won't let me in either. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it's a great idea. A great idea, actually. So we'll see if that comes to fruition after hey, this. Hey, I, I, I have nothing but great ideas. Yeah. That's like, the, I got Sheena Brooke in my pool right now. Yeah. How cool is that? Cool. Yeah, shout out prison system. <laughs> my stepmom <laughs> works for the prison money. systems. Yeah. Uh, you play you play a few instruments, guitar. You're one of the nastiest piano players I ever heard in my life. That's um, a ploy. I'm actually not that great of a piano player, but I do a lot of moving around so people think I am. I, I play pretty good. Like It's my first instrument, but I wouldn't say that I'm like a someone who could like... I think it's just because you and I play well together. Yeah, I so, mean, like, it's, it's but like I can hang if I need to. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't call myself like I'm a singer first, sure. definitely, and then like if I need to hang on guitar and I need to hang on piano, I can. Yeah. But um, definitely humbled when I play play with other people. Oh, I like, feel like Hunter and them. <laughs> yeah. Hunter McDaniel's around. Yeah. You just want to, you're like, all right, I Like, quit. I've done some I shows quit. with Brian Sutherland. And oh, nothing yeah. will make you feel like a sh- musician. I mean, I feel great, too, because I love playing with it, but, like, it's yeah. definitely, uh, where you're just like, oh, this guy is just beyond. Yeah. You know, so. He's a freak of nature. He is a freak of nature. Anyway. Speaking of which, if you listen to my music at all, there's a duet love song on both of my solo records um, that Sheena uh, one of them we co-wrote together oh, and she did the music really for the second one too she just plays the piano on it and totally turned that into a real song but Brian Sutherland's on both of those um, tracks is a cello player as well and it's like he is, he's so ridiculous. beautiful yeah. I could listen to that guy play all day long same freaking nature that guy same yeah big fan favorite project you've ever done oh wow it's so hard for me because I feel like it's based on like the journey I feel like you could really trace where I'm at in my life by each individual project I've done starting with fellow bliss and to gypsy native which gypsy native was just all fun and so yeah. I did love doing that I learned I learned how to play in front of a crowd by playing in gypsy native me you. too. I think I learned how to entertain people. I didn't didn't think I could do that until we we did that trio and it was really fun. Yeah. And just like I think that it like a, as fun goes, that was probably the most fun project because we would dress up and like just fuck around yeah, with everybody. Course, course it, God, I don't think I can get sets. back into that. Let me tell you. <laughs> I, why am I singing it? I'm like <laughs> tying this thing together and then trying to sing at the top of my range. If um, I ever wear a bow tie again, it'll be too soon. It'll be. <laughs> you look good in bow tie. Yeah, I do. <laughs> it was fun. I mean, I definitely would revisit that for fun. Um, I think as projects go to, like, I'm always, like, I'm always chasing something better. I don't think I'll ever stop that. So much of who I am. So as yeah. much as I love my latest music, I feel like I'm all. People are like, well, you have you have content. I'm like, yeah, but I can make better content. And so I think in that, as an artist, the, the hard part is that I'm constantly dissatisfied with because <laughs> sure. I'm like, I have better songs. I know yeah. I can write a better song, and I always feel like I can write a better song, and I want to you know, work towards that. Um, I'm the exact opposite. I'm always shocked when I write a song. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit, I, I have a whole song, <laughs> and I wrote it. All right, cool. Well, let's record this piece of shit. <laughs> That's why I like all my albums... Uh, they're so well produced, but the content is so not good. Well, I would, I would, I would say heavily that you just tell yourself that, because it's easier to swallow that pill than to say, "Oh, I made something good, and now I have to hope everyone likes it." The good parts are what <laughs> Caleb did. Like I know what I did, and I know what he did, and Kay- without Caleb, those records would have been terrible. I'm just gonna say that, but. I don't um, say it. Hold on. We're in pre-production for a third solo album. That's great. Um, and I'm really stoked about this one because there's four songs on it that like I don't want to be like they're good, but you like, like them. You believe they're, in them. They're the ones that I'm like. They're the most mature songs I've written musically. Yeah. And 
Lyrically. That's a good feeling to feel like, oh, I've ri- uh, my my writing has grown. Yeah, which I think is what I mean. I'm constantly chasing the desire to be a better a better yeah. writer, and better I think means also like I love to write different genres, and I like to write for other people. And I like yeah. and so constantly stretching and saying, yeah, I can get in a room and write a country song. I can also get in a room and write a rock song if I want to, yeah. or a hip hop song, or something that's pop, and like being able to do that and grow, and then find where my artistry lands in the middle of all that mush is fun for me the mush yeah i love it i'm like i'm doing uh, my this next show i have is an all country show and i haven't done country in a while but i'm like and i'm just gonna play all country songs i have them i like country i just i'm not a i wouldn't call myself a country artist talking about some baby locked in i listen i love me some i love that no do it you play some georgia florida line or whatever it's called i'm not doing that (laughs) Right. <laughs> not because I don't like them, but it's just not on my list. Yeah, I, I get that. Yeah. I get that. Can we talk a little bit about your songwriting process? Um, yeah, I think it's different every time. I I always think it's important for me to write alone still, which is the thing that is easy to fall out of when, like, I split my time from in Florida and Nashville, so I'm in Nashville a lot. And it's different every time I write, I would say, but the process of co-writing is all quite similar. Like you get in a room and hopefully you're comfortable enough to be vulnerable enough to write something that matters or is meaningful. Or you can, if I'm writing with another artist, get myself out of the way enough to hear what's meaningful for them and not for me. And um, like I wrote a song with this girl named Taylor and she's great, she's got a great voice and she has this idea um, about whiskey and the thing about me is sometimes I get in a room with country artists and I'm like okay no songs about whiskey and nothing that says neon signs or the word neon because it's in every song let's do something different and so then you know you just have to like humble yourself and also get over yourself because we wrote a song about whiskey that has that word in it and it's great it's a great song she's gonna cut it it's gonna be a banger like it's a great song and so then you have to say whatever it is about me you have to get over it nobody's like that cool that I know what the end all be all of a good song is Mm -hmm. that's that Mm -hmm. that ego is only going to get in the way of good songs and so I think there's that process and then I think I recently had such a cool write with Christian Bush where I think because it was specific for my artistry he really challenged me in a way I've never been challenged where he says there's two only two things matter for your artistry and you really got to start letting go of the rest and that's your voice the only thing that makes me special is my voice and my message and so for someone who's used to doing a lot of things alone I play alone I'm always trying to fill space we wrote to a drum track just playing in the background and just he I didn't have an instrument in my hand he just played notes and so it was all about the melody and whatever I was trying to say and um, in, the, in the, whichever idea we ran with and um, not that the song has to like change the world but like what am I trying to say? Yeah. And so uh, it was really fun. So I think every process is different because sometimes I will just have, like, a, I'm a title writer. I have lists and lists and lists of titles and then I want to chase chase the meaning. So it's always different and I think good if, if you're wanting to be a songwriter you're trying, or you are a songwriter to say, okay, how can I write not like I write? Sure. And, and push yourself past that. So. Who, who's your favorite person to write with? Or do you have one? It's so hard. Like most of my latest music I wrote with my friends Danny and Megan Myrick. Um, during COVID, Megan and I wrote like twice a week, I swear. I don't know how much, but we wrote all the time. I love writing with her. Um, it's That's a difficult thing because there's so many different. So I love writing with them, but they're some of my best friends. My, I just wrote with Christian for the first time. Obviously, that was a unique, special experience. I've been writing a little bit with Maya Sharp, and I admire the f- out of her songwriting so I'm like man I I love writing with her Um, so it's hard for me sometimes to differentiate like do I love the song or do I love the hang Mm -hmm. and then you and you know so um, but obviously most of my music is the songs I've written with Megan and Danny Um, but I couldn't say that I've been it's very rare that I'm in a co-write and I go I didn't enjoy that I didn't I don't think that were I mean I just wrote with Carlene Witt Mm, um, she's the best. She's a local. She's great. We she's wrote a great a song. She's adorable. She's such a cute. And she's really talented. I think yeah. she's got a, a great talent as a songwriter. And yeah. so I'm like, anytime you want to write, let's write. If I yeah. have, you know, like, 
And so, um, and that's fun too to not to write with someone who's here in South yeah. Florida instead of someone who's in Nashville. And um, we wrote a great song. So it's all about collaboration and just like to me getting something that I feel that I can turn around and play or I can believe in. And I feel like we did that. So yeah, I mean, I've written. I mean, one of my favorite songs I've ever written, I wrote with Katie Lyon. Hmm. Um, so, and then Christian, Christian and I worked on that song. And so it just like, I, I can't say that I have a favorite. Yeah, that's you know? good. I yeah. respect that. I respect that. What, uh, what are you working on right now or have coming down the pipeline that you're really excited about? That you can talk about. Yeah, I mean, there. <laughs> I think... I think the hard part about my my career and kind of just like the obviously the hecticness of my life is like I'm I feel like I'm just now back on the path of working towards something um you know I started working with Christian I'd like to see that develop more um because I like the process of what we're doing and I'm always writing in the pipeline I think that's what I'm doing um I'm doing some songwriters festivals I do an interview show with Bose which I'm constantly trying to um grow and develop and like you know so I, I have those coming up too for um in Mar one in maryland and one here in southwest florida which is the golf cart karaoke show right. um, um so it's just like stuff like that i'm just constantly trying to get to a place too i think playing live is where i love to be and so just playing some more dynamic yeah. stuff but i'm always working on about seven things yeah i mean yeah, i think you and that. i are both like that I was just thinking about that as you were talking about your, your golf cart thing, man. I was like, and talking earlier about like show productions and stuff. Yeah. And it's like, we literally, we do the same we stuff. We do the same shit. We always And have. it's all out of the box. Like yours is in a golf cart and, and mine's in a pool. pool. You know what I mean? Like, um, it's so funny how uh, maybe that's, maybe that's why we're such kindred spirits. As yeah. We're, I think our brains work really similar. Yeah. Our creative yeah. process is somewhat similar. Especially with the ladies. I'm just a little more of a, like, I don't know. I feel like I'm... Talented? No! <laughs> <laughs> so full of <laughs> that, like, I, I, I think you have, like, a really, really artistic way about you that sometimes I lack. But I think sometimes when we do things together, that's what team-wise makes it work. Um... Like I loved writing together. You have a really hyper artistic way of writing your guitar parts and your lines and things like that. And then I have a really like, I write in a very like, a box, like a very structured way of writing, which is good for me to sometimes challenge it. So I think in that way we're different. Mm. Yeah. I, I, I have learned so much from writing with you. There's this one song um, that's gonna be on this new record. It's called Bottom of the Bag Blues. Oh, you guess sent it to about. me. Did I? You did send it to me. And Just I, the lyrics or the, or the work tape? I can't remember. And I was, I, I think I was in like Wisconsin when you sent it to uh, me and I never got a chance to like. I, well, I'll have to resend it yeah. to you. Um, but there's a line in the chorus that says, uh, it's where I've hit rock bottom. It seems my soul has been forgotten. I'm just bad news. I got the bottom of the bag blues. That's good. But they, um, that, I remember when we were, I don't remember what song we were working on, but you were like, I'm a sucker for a line that has double rhymes in it. Yeah. And that's, and I, I always think about that when I'm writing. And I'm so glad you did that because I love that lyric. Um, that's where, I'm, where it's where I've hit rock bottom, seems my soul's been forgotten. Yeah. And it's like it only came out because I was trying to make them rhyme, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like kind of a slant rhyme, but. Um, it's like the phonetic of it is so fun. Yeah, I'm kind of very like grateful for you slumming it with me because I've learned a lot from your talents. Um, and I think that shows, um, I, I took, we did the songwriter retreat last year that, that you, that you oh, yeah. did the workshops for, um, which were phenomenal. It was really fun. Everybody walked away much better songwriters because of you. But like I put in so much stuff that you taught in that workshop. Um, I don't know why we're even talking about this other than the fact that I'm just appreciative that you slum with me. It's so because, <laughs> because I'm gonna ride them, them coattails forever. Well, I think that's like the point of community is like if, if you have something to teach me, you're always open to teach me if I need it. Yeah. And likewise, like yeah. if I have something I can offer, 
So we grow together. It's not a contest. That's society's bullshit. Speaking of me growing and learning from you, what have you learned about yourself from being a full-time artist? I feel like it's an interesting question because like lately with everything like my family has been through and like losing our stuff in the hurricane and 2020 and losing my friend, like I feel like the last three years has been a year of self growth. Uh, I think it, in that I learn more about my artistry just by default because like I think learning to be proud of the space that I'm in mm. uh, and the person I am and knowing I, like being really satisfied and content with who I am which doesn't e erase ambitions or goals um, and finding that balance is like a constant journey that I'm constantly looking at I'm looking to heal I'm looking to grow I'm looking to let go of past traumas but also sometimes doing that you have to deal with them again you know yeah. and so I think in that personal growth my artistry becomes more and more genuine and I think in a way because like I don't actually I just want to write good stuff yeah. and I want to be proud of it do I hope that I can eventually get to a place where I have maybe some more streams and some higher paid shows yeah but if I don't I'm still really proud of what I'm doing and what I write where I'm at and that's like a constant thing I think all of us especially in this industry which wants to be competitive is to go after it in a way that's more like hey i'm doing this because it's who i am i think chapel rowan it's this awesome interview about like i'm not gonna fall into this trap of where fans are insane she's like i'm not i'm an artist and i don't owe you that because i'm a famous artist it's just who i am this is the job i chose because this is what i do i'm not gonna let you bully me into photos or whatever it was i don't remember her entire conversation but i it's interesting because I feel like in a different way to turn that is like I'm gonna be proud of the, the place that I'm at because there's always someone wanting more and there's always someone with wanting less like and there's just this you know there's always someone with more always someone with less be happy where you're at and then just continue to grow you know that's good yeah. um, what keeps you driving you know I know I know you, you mentioned like you want to write better songs and be a better artist like what where does that drive come from? <laughs> I mean, what would my therapist say? Or like, I think, um, I don't know. It's just a makeup of who I am. I want to be better. I always want to be better. I, I think that's a, a wonderful thing about me. Uh, should, when there's balance to say, and, and hopefully it's not just with my music, but me as a person. I want to take the shitty things that have happened to me and make myself a better person despite them and then do that. I want to take the songs that I've written that aren't so great and make them use that process of writing that song, of that co-write, that, that, you know, that rejection to make it better instead of letting it weigh me down. I think that's just like a driving principle of my life is I'm going to take this thing when someone hears my song and says, it's great, but it's not good enough. We don't like it. Bye. Okay, great. I'm gonna take it and say, okay, what don't you like about it? And let me work on that thing. Instead of being like, you don't understand me. You don't get my artistry. Or I'm just being rejected because no one, the, I, I'm not, I don't like to live in that space. I wanna live in space. Okay, cool. Is there anything that I can apply to make me better or do I just need to let it go? And then just keep moving up, you know, emotionally, you know, mentally, in my craft, whatever. just got deep it's like a really yeah. serious conversation for us i feel like we need to pick it up so uh <laughs> now it's time for brad jokes brad jokes i accidentally texted steve have a hood day then he started a gang war Speaking of filthy women, um, let's talk about the Femme Collective. Nice, nice. <laughs> nice transition. I'm the king of segues. 
Uh, what is the Fem Collective? I kind of have stopped doing those, which is a bummer. Well, this is great. I did awesome research. Um, it's still like a thing I think that lives, but like it started because like um, a friend, a friend of mine and I were talking about. I think predominantly in Nashville, she's over thirty and just like didn't feel like she had a place or a voice or anywhere to play. And, you know, just being frustrated with, you know, I think she, you know, the country music scene in general, which I feel like has grown since it started in, I don't know, was that 2015, 2016? Um, and so I was like, man, I don't know. And I think this is a good principle. Like, I don't know how to change the industry. I don't have that kind of power, but I could definitely give you a place to play. Mm. And so I just started hosting shows mm. and I hosted them at the Island Hopper and I hosted them in Nashville. This was all before 2020. And, um, and just put on some of the best shows that I'm just so proud of with some of the most amazing talent, all of these, and just, and these different types of females too. Like, you know, I'd have Bridget Tatum come and play and then um, Megan Linville would play and, and then Amy Muriello would play and she's, she's got such roots in like rock pop and, and um, just all, they're all so good. And, um, you know, it was just, just a different, we, I would try to do different things too, to make it sometimes it'd be around, sometimes it'd be like one at a time. I still try to do that when I host. I learned so much from that. Um, and, and from that, I hosted a couple of pride rounds here out on Captiva during the Island Hopper, which was a really big deal for that to be so welcomed and so well received. Um, and I love hosting shows. I think most, most the thing I love the most, and you've played some for me when I do Sounds of Summer at the Sydney Burn and just, I really like introducing people that like me to people that I like. Mm. And I think that's sort of like my favorite thing about it. Like, hey, I know you guys watch me play, but have you heard so-and-so? I love that feeling. Yeah. Um, so anytime I do something like that. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping to, to do maybe some more of that. Um, but it just comes from a desire to just be like, man, I know so many amazing women, empowering women, and women that equally need to be empowered. And it's such a team thing, and, and I think that's why I was like, let's do, let's do a show, let's do some regular shows. And I did them pretty regularly till 2020, where I was doing like maybe four a year, and then I was doing one a year um, until after Ian and uh, the hurricane came. And now, just with the rebuild of Fort Myers Beach, I haven't been able to host an all-female round again just because the rosters have been smaller sure. uh, due, to, due to the venues opening up. But it's coming coming back, it's coming along, so maybe next year I'll do an all-female one, or, or hopefully I'll do my own thing, and um, which is kind of something that's on the horizon for me to put together some events that kind of serve that. Could you shut the I was I was sitting there the whole like, time. I was like, I don't want to interrupt her. They're, but I wanna they're like, hey, we're watching. What's up, y'all? Yeah. I like nature. Leave them be, they're singing. They are they are you gotta let a songbird sing you gotta let a songbird sing that's you know what uh, I mean? it's a good line for a song somebody write um, that down yeah yeah it's a freebie for you it's freebie. um where do you think your empowerment comes from as a woman in this industry and why is it important to you that other women feel empowered i think um i was just having this conversation with my wife summer um Who's lovely, by the way. I, my whole life sort of shifted when I met her in a way that is like, I just, I recognized, she was like the first person to tell me, you know, you can say no to that. <laughs> like, she was the first person to stick up for me when, when my, fa you know, some of my family was like, uh, up, when we, we got engaged, I, they were very homophobic and, and hateful and she was like, this isn't okay. And I just always thought I was the one with the problem when it came to that. But just in general, her advocating for me to be paid what I'm worth, her saying, oh, you know, you, you should do the thing that you love. You should write the way you love. You, should, you can definitely do that. And just having someone just have my back and be in my corner changed so much about my love for myself, me feeling, me feeling as an individual like a stronger, more better, you know, more, more better, more worthy person. Um, and so I think in that, knowing what that 
empowerment did for me, I want to do that for other people. Mm -hmm. Knowing how important it is to say, like, if there are people that are dragging you down and telling you you're not worth it or that you're not good enough because you're over 30 or you're gay or you're not skinny enough or you're to this or I don't like your brown hair, whatever it is, that's all bullshit. You just need somebody to say, oh no, I love this part about you. You don't need that part. I love this part about you. And so I think in that, um, it really, I think I've always had a heart for that, but just having having someone just completely changed my life when it was just so opposite of the way I grew up and what I had in my life, uh, it was a big deal for me. And I think it still is. So, and she still is. She's still advocating for me. Yeah. She's still making sure, I, you know, Hey, this person's taking advantage of you. Yeah. You know, whatever it is, you know. You know, I've known I've known you for a long time, almost twenty years. Yeah. Something like that, seventeen. Yeah. Eighteen years, something like that. Pushing twenty years. And um we both seen each other through all kinds of crazy yeah. shit. and you know, I was literally there the night you and Summer met. Yeah. Um, I know I leaned over to you, I was like, Yo, you see that girl? Yeah. She and I went, yeah, I'm going to go kiss her. <laughs> um, it's, I totally kissed her wife before she ever did. And that I, I actually think we were probably already hooking up and nobody knew. Were you really? <laughs> I don't remember. I'd have to ask her. She's really good with timelines and everything in my life is a blur. But knowing us, probably. We did meet at Backstreet's, yeah. 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 I was playing there with just me and Slim. Um and I, someone took a picture of us. I have a picture of the first moment we talked because her friends were like, whoa, something's happening. And took a picture. And we've been, you know, we've been together uh, so almost funny. 10 years. Yeah, yeah, man. That's, that's so cool. Great. But anyway, I, I've, I've seen the change in you um, from your time spent with her, just a more confidence and sure. um, that ability to advocate for yourself yeah. and stand up for yourself, yeah. which is, you know, I think. Uh, you you need to know that doesn't just empower women, but like, like, you know, I I feel empowered because of of your example, oh, you know, great. and you leading, and I am positive I'm not the only the only dude um, who's inspired by you and feels empowered by by what you do. So. I, I hope so. Like I I feel like I've been through so much, and I have started a lot of my life late, in a way that I just always want to advocate and remind people, not because I have any answers, just because I know that all I needed was someone to say, hey man, do what makes you happy. Yeah. Be yourself, be proud, yeah. be you. Yeah. Don't listen to that, you know. That's good. So. What kind of obstacles have you had to overcome as a, as a woman in this industry? That's an like, interesting question for me because, I, again, I feel like I've started kind of late. <laughs> and so, I mean, I've definitely had the, the typical, I think um, my friend Sully took me to Republic Records. I have that photo somewhere um, to showcase. And they really liked me. They had just signed Cassidy Pope. And they're like, oh, you're, you're just like her. We, and we just signed her. And um, definitely complimented me, uh, but they weren't really sure what to do with me because yeah. they just signed here. So this, they actually are the ones that sent me to Nashville to start writing, and I learned about that world through them. You know, like, and then you know, obviously nothing took after that, and I didn't end up signing with them or anything. But it was interesting because one of the things I remember Sully coming into my hotel. We were in New York, and he was like, and I'm just like not, I'm not a sensitive person. Um, I think as long as you approach me with respect you can kind of tell me anything um and he told me that the label felt i really needed to lose weight wow and um it was interesting because obviously like at the looking wow. back i was not a heavy person no. but i'm also not a person that's offended but i'm like yeah whatever it's not like it's gonna hurt me to eat healthier and so i and obviously uh, i was with someone else at the time who was not like very helpful with that um but it didn't end up mattering anyway, but I've had some of that stuff, which I think society's definitely changed a bit when it comes to that, which I'm super grateful for, because um, it is absolutely irrelevant what you look like yeah. when <laughs> I feel like um, I want to see someone's passion. I want to yeah. see their personality. I want to, I mean, someone at any weight, color, gender, fluidity, sexy is sexy talent is talent yeah. like leave it alone I don't know that's kind of how I feel but um, anyway so it's naive to think that that is how everyone feels yeah. you know 
so uh but yeah it didn't like bother me i'm not i wasn't mad at him or anything i was like yeah whatever i could try um and so i think i had some of that um man when i was on the voice I had to try on like 30 pairs of shoes because they wanted me in heels. I think because I'm not like incredibly androgynous as a lesbian, but I'm also not very, very hyper femme. I'm not super comfortable in heels. I'm not like, they did not know how to dress me. I actually had a lot of people call me after my battle round and they were like, um, you sang great. What were you wearing? And I, <laughs> and I didn't hate my outfit. I was like, I was like, yeah, I look great. Who cares, you know? Yeah. Uh, because I am, I learned that about the voice though. Me being easygoing and just able to do anything sometimes is hard in the industry. Because I can do country and I can be femme and I can do hip hop, it makes it difficult for someone to put you in the box that they need to put you in, you know? So where it's, that's where I just go back to like, I'm happy with what I do. I'm proud of what I do. Um, you know, I'm constantly rediscovering and refining new things about myself. So I think as a woman, most of my um, struggles definitely would would stem back from, you know, my my growing up and growing up in church and being kind of like forced into being married and then coming out and conversion therapy and all that kind of shit. Um, I think because when I came through that, I was just like, oh, yeah, fuck it. And everything else is a breeze. Yeah. Everything else I can deal with because I... I was strong enough to make these decisions to come out to be who I am so I can handle anything else. And then when I met Summer, it was even more so like, oh, shit. like I'm definitely even on a personal front, which is the hardest part with, with my family. I'm allowed to advocate for myself. And um, so, yeah, I don't know if I answered your question. Yeah, you did. And you capped it off with being a bad, bad B word. Being a bad, bad You were rude. A crude, crude bitch. <laughs> How's that song go? Old bitch, new bitch, young bitch, rude because it depends on who you ask what you, what people would call me. Call me what you want, I'ma still be a cool bitch. She's like, I don't care what you think, I think I'm cool. You know. It's a great song. It's rough to have nobody wants to with bad like me. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> That's kind of what the song's about. What was your inspiration for that song? I just told you. <laughs> <laughs> that whole spiel was my inspiration for that song. I wrote that with Megan Linville, and um, she was sort of feeling the same way. Like, God, it is so frustrating sometimes as a woman. Um, but you just got to find the right people in your corner, you know, because it's not everybody. Yeah. That, you know. It's a completely random question, just to bring it up a little bit. What's your favorite venue to play, local or otherwise? Oh, that's so tough. I love some of the places I play. Um, man, my Ever that you've played? Like, ever? I did love playing, I've played the Bluebird a few times, which is special. Um, I always think that's special, just such a listening room. I love yeah. any songwriter situation. Um, there's, a, there's a festival in Dripping Springs, Texas, where they hold up signs that are like, don't talk, um, which is an interesting thing. But I also love our songwriters festivals. I, you know, Cabana's is like my home place underneath the diamond head across the street from my house and then they'll do songwriter stuff and people will come to drink and have fun and be loud but they're also listening yeah. and I kind of love that not everyone can see that or understand that that's what's happening yeah. and I think I love that those are kind of my people I've recently started playing on at the Sydney rooftop bar mm -hmm. which is just a really cool new vibe um, and I find that most of the people that come to that particular venue to see me, they're there to hear my songs. Yeah. So I'll spend three hours playing 90% covers. I mean, originals and just occasional cover, whatever, you know, just yeah. hanging out with people that. Trying to play footsie with me? What's going footsie. on over here? I'm swimming. Um, yeah, so I like it. Nice. What's the one venue that you want to play that you haven't played yet? I want to play um, more. Um, there's uh, some some a couple different companies like Olivia and um, um, God, I'm drawing a blank. 
the, there's a couple in Tampa that do like um, lesbian specific events and I love that stuff and I love just being around my people and empowering each other and just being I don't know I, so I would love to do more of, I would love to do that I think that's on my bucket list to yeah and a lot of my friends play for the Olivia group I'd love to play for them so I would I would say that's that's probably on my bucket list yeah, that's cool yeah what uh what what fills your cup as like a singer and a musician like what is it the feedback from the crowd is it just the actual letting go of emotions like getting them out whether in song or music or whatever like what what part of it fills you up the most probably the feedback from the crowd i always get and you know summer who's like she knows me better than anybody and has seen me play a thousand times in a thousand different ways is i always do better when the crowd is there and into it and I sing better, I perform better. And that's she that's was one of the conversations about potentially doing a live album just because I am at my best with a group of people yeah, vibing. Me, me too. So. Me too. Probably the crowd. Yeah. I feel that. She has some ever thought about doing management full time? Um I don't I think she always sometimes and she definitely I always she's so good at it. And I feel like in, in certain circumstances, she really, really could excel. Um, but, you know, she has to be passionate about it. And it's like, I don't know that she would be, I think she said to me, she's not sure if she would be as passionate for any other artist. It's a shame, because I was about to say, I need a manager. She, and she is great at it. She does always, people do reach out to her. Just the other day, she's like, hey, I need Briz and Ladies information. I think they would be appropriate for this venue who's asking me for you and you're not available. Or yeah. she'll be like, hold on, let me give them Slim's information because Sheena's not available and da 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 da. So she's really quick to do that for people that she likes and believes in. Um, it's more for her about, obviously, she's not a musician, so she doesn't think you're good. She doesn't know how to pretend that you are so right, she's not right. going to it's also her personality so right. like, if she doesn't like a song i've written she would just tell me yeah which is a, an amazing quality and a very helpful thing for yeah. me as a writer because i want way. that yeah. um but in that too she's she won't recommend someone if she doesn't think they're good which i think keeps people trusting her opinion um but also you know i think is where she um I don't know. I don't know. I feel like she'd be great at it. I do. She's just, you know, I'm lucky. She does it for me. I'm really, really lucky. She's yeah. a great, great agent, great manager. Yeah. She's more of an agent, um, but obviously, as as my wife, she gets in that manager role anytime I need her. Hey, does this look like crap? What do you think about this? I, you know, yeah. when it comes to my artistry management, yeah. and what direction I'm heading. So she, she definitely can take that hat on for management. But, but she's great with venues. They love her, respect her. Yeah. You know, she's a lovable gal. Yeah, she is. Now it's time for a segment called "Hey, Did You Know?" Hey, did you know? Hey, did you know that the Pride Parades were first organized when a group of rather enthusiastic uh, drag performers. Uh, in the 80s like early 80s discovered that wearing glitter and absolutely fabulous costumes uh, made it easier to find their friends in crowded places and so they turned that into a parade to celebrate the fashion prowess I did not know that and their newfound ability to spot each other but it's that genius fascinating? and fascinating I like it no surprise that um, drag queens invented something so cool it's not true i want to believe it though you can it's not true though no chat gpt wrote that that's terrible yeah. why are you lying to me about beautiful things well i want you to tell me a terrible lie and be like just kidding that's not true and we'd be like yay yeah <laughs> so if you post it on the internet it will be true it will it be. be true Speaking of pride, what's a dude got to do to play pride one year? I would, I would love to play you pride. Sound like me. All I want to do is play, play prides. How do I, how do I get on that bill? I don't know. Who do I talk to? You got to reach out to whoever's throwing the pride. 
Shelly does keep qualifying. Shelly, AJ, they, they put on a great show. That's uh, it's pretty pretty intense. <laughs> I think if you want to talk to somebody about that later. I did just get a new therapist, and she doesn't know what to do with me. She'll figure it out. I hope so. <laughs> so I was with this last one for years and years, and I hate starting over with a new therapist. It's like, dude, I just... But good for you. I believe in therapy. Me too. You know? Yeah, I've been in therapy for about 10 years now, and I am a radically different person because of it, and I'm very grateful for yeah. it. So, I've known you that long, and I would say I agree. Not that I haven't always loved every version of you, but this is my favorite. Oh, shucks. You're my favorite version <laughs> of you, too. You're um, so cute. Now it's time okay. for a segment called the Southwest Florida Rundown. The Southwest Florida Rundown. Okay. Where in Southwest Florida do you live? I live off McGregor now. I used to live in Fort Myers Beach before Ian took the house. The McGregor oh, area. But now I'm in the McGregor area by McGregor Pizza, which I would dare say the best pizza in town. Mm, interesting. McGregor Pizza. Hmm. What's so good about it? It's just good pizza, man. Like it's it's great pizza. Um, they they have a red, white, and green, which is like a ricotta spinach tomato thing that I could just eat all day long. Yeah, that sounds I'd, amazing. I think it's be, because I've had it both sober and drunk, good both ways. Nice. Have you had it high? Not yet. <laughs> what, what is it? Have you ever had McGregor pizza on oh, weed? <laughs> Yep, that's yeah. my favorite favorite pizza shop, easily. Well, outside of pizza, what's your favorite place to eat in Southwest Florida? You see how professional I was just scratching my face while asking that question? I think... As if this is not on camera. It's fine. That's the power of editing. You just uh, pan over. Yeah. Oh, um, right. I didn't even need to make... They... It's tough because I eat at home a lot. I'm a vegetarian. I, you know... But there's still a lot of restaurants around here I like. I, we just don't eat out very often. Um, That's bullshit. But don't. If you don't have a favorite, that's I'm fine. trying to think. Like, cause I, cause I, I mean, I like Cooper's Hawk. It's a chain, mm -hmm. but I do like that place. Because uh, they, they always have like a bunch of vegetarian options. Um, for date nights, really nice date nights. We there's a restaurant called Harold's off 41, which is like really bougie. So it's like special occasion dinner we have there. Um, and the chef is he's great. Anyway, um, that's all I can think of current. Have you eaten at McGregor's yet? I have not. Um, I haven't. There's a few vegetarian options oh, that yeah. are banging. We I went I've been by there for like a drink to watch you play. Or something. Claire or whatever. I haven't actually gone to see Claire play yet, but that's the goal. We'll have to go there for dinner. What are you doing tonight? I don't know. I have to look at my to-do list. <laughs> if it was not for the little piece of paper on my kitchen counter, I would get, like, distracted by whatever creative thing and never get anything done. That's me and my Google calendar. Yeah, I have. Yeah. I literally don't know. My It said to do my morning dog walking feeding, you know, coffee dishes and come to see you. And I don't know what's after that on the list. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you have nothing and you get bored, Constantine and I are playing there tonight. Oh, cool, all right. Um, it's a sh straight up shred fest. The first time we played together, we played six songs in three hours. Wow. And then we're like, I wonder if we can make it five. And so then the next two or three times we did five minutes or five songs. And then a couple times ago, I was like, dude, let's go for four songs tonight. And we did two songs the first set, one song the second set, and one song the third set. That's insane. Um, yeah. That's super fun. I it's, mean, I could never do that. So now we're trying to get it to where we can do three songs. Three songs. One song per <laughs> set. And we don't repeat songs. Like So every, every month, we play once a month, and every month it's a different set of songs. That's cool. 
But anyway, you should check out the food there. There's some banging vegetarian. Yeah, I have to check it out. Um, they got one salad there called Chef's Fancy <laughs> Tomatoes. Fancy <laughs> tomatoes. It's these marinated tomatoes, fresh mozzarella, arugula, oh. spring mix. I'm speaking my language. I love uh, arugula. Chickpeas, black olives, and this like balsamic vinaigrette kind of thing. So good. I'm so hungry right now. You're making me hungry. What's your favorite place to go for a beer? Or a drink, I guess. A cocktail. Here in Southwest Florida? Yeah. I wait, I don't go out a lot when I'm here. It's okay. <laughs> I'm lame. Um, honestly, it's hard because like we've changed our we we live downtown now, so I used to just go across the street to the cottage or to Diamond Head for drinks because we would just walk over there. We haven't really found that place yet, so any recommendations? How how would you go? Um, uh, I think we've like tried a few places that are cool, but they haven't been like our like oh let's go here for a drink. Okay. Um, and I respect that. Yeah, we haven't had time to try them together too. Like for summer and I are like going out and having fun. Like, yeah. Like I played at Chartreuse, really cool spot. We haven't been there together to like when I'm not working. Yeah. Um, yeah. So set Voodoo Brewery, like it's cool. But we, you know, I think we did go there with some friends once, and that's a pretty cool vibe. So I'm still looking for it. They keep trying to book me there, but I'm I'm booked for the rest of the year. Yeah. And I'm always like. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's like, well, let, let's get something in there for February. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I got to give first right of refusal to yeah. my other places first. Yeah. And I'm like, I may not. Yeah, I played there a few times. Though. I, they're really nice I feel people. like such a jerk. Nah, nah, nah. They, they're good. They'll wait for it. I hate being so in demand. I hate being so popular. <laughs> You're so popular. What's your favorite place to listen to live music in Southwest Florida? Man, it really depends. Like, I've been... Because, you know, like, restaurants... The vibe can be different on any given day. Yeah. You know? Like, I've gone and seen you at Mudbugs and loved seeing that, even though you're a little um, separated. Um, and But I I like the vibe there. Plus, I love their Bloody Marys, so... Yeah. Um, whew, I got real toasted there once watching you play. <laughs> yeah, you did. Because <laughs> uh, we went for a happy hour, and I was like, wow... What happened? I've had six of these. <laughs> and if you know me, that is way too many. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I've seen you play there and I like it. Um, I've been to uh, the Soho House downtown to see Briz and Lady. And they're really fun to watch because they have they're like a, so freaking good. a lot of energy, but at a low frequency. Yeah. It's my favorite thing about them. So you're getting these like high energy songs, but at a frequency where you can like listen to them and still be engaged in the people you're with. Yeah. I feel like that's a really valuable yeah. quality in them. Yeah. Um, I love them. They're so good. Yeah, they're great. So talented. So yeah, I, I, I mean, to me, it's all about like who's there. Yeah. And just vibing with the people and knowing that the you can always feel if the restaurant is happy to have that person there. Yeah. And I like that. I like that when I play and I like that when other people play. When they're like, we respect our talent and we're glad you're here. You know, that's a whole thing. So. Yeah. What's your favorite area of Southwest Florida? Again, that's like really tough for me. I grew up loving downtown and loving McGregor. But I've lived everywhere in this town. I was born here at Lee Memorial. Um, obviously, Summer and I lived on the beach for about 10 years. Um, and she grew up there, like elementary school, so even longer for her. It, you know, definitely my favorite place to live. I love that life. I miss that life at times. Um, but I do love the McGregor area. I, I mean, I also like grew up, I went to Orange River Elementary out there, and my family had property out there, um, you know, on that Charlotte County line, and then like. Um, I lived in the villas when I was young and then went to villas and then I then I went to Suncoast for a minute Suncoast out in North Fort Myers and so it's like everywhere in this town I've probably lived there yeah. hung there known people there um, so hard hard to say but obviously my heart is still at, on Fort Myers Beach so I respect that 
which leads to this next question, which I think I know the answer to. What's your favorite beach? Yeah, Fort Myers Beach. Yeah, I Duh. have a feeling. Yeah. Um, it's a special beach. Like, you can have an all-day beach day there yeah. like no other beach. Yeah. You know, yeah. so it's, it's great. What's your favorite part about living in Southwest Florida and being from Southwest Florida? I think that if you meet this may be controversial in its way but like I think real Floridians like I'm a Floridian and sometimes I can spot a real Floridian from a mile away like real Floridians they just want to like do their thing and be left alone and like be cool and they don't care about who you love or what you do or what you, they're just like hey man What's up? Welcome to Florida. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. Um, I love Floridians. I love being from Florida. Yeah, I love, um, I love the mix between like this kind of like swampy, trashy, classy thing, yeah. you know. And I feel like that's the thing that I love about here is like, yeah, I might never know. I loved that about Fort Myers Beach. Like, I couldn't tell which guy lived underneath my neighbor's house and which guy owned all of Estero Boulevard. Yeah. You can't tell the difference. And I think I like that uh, quality in people. And I think, I don't know, I love Florida. It's changing. And so I have my moments and I do spend a lot of time in Nashville and I do love Nashville. Um, but this is my home, man. Yeah, this that. is where my people are. So yeah, it's, it's always a tough, tough thing. So I don't know if I answered that question either, but yeah, you because know, no, I, I don't know how to answer it. I guess. You did. I would. I wouldn't have. Um, I don't think I would have said the same thing. But now that you've said it, I'm like, yeah, because like people, you know, I, I was born in West Virginia, and then I, we moved to Florida when I was like three. Yeah. Maybe four. Yeah. Um, I spent most of my life in Florida, and so I consider myself a Florida boy, and you're absolutely right you know i just i was playing at this one place every friday for years and i got i got stolen away by um another place and i just like what broke my heart was the, the place i was playing was nothing but locals yeah all floridians or people that have been here at least a long time yeah you know and and now i play at a place that's a little more bougie yeah and um i love it i love the gig yeah I'm like i don't not like it. that it's just but i miss those people something special about locals man like you know a guy named hump like come on man yeah. you know that guy's got to be awesome yeah. i wrote a song about him put yeah. him on a record so anyway now for an update with the weather here's maggie potts maggie Ugh, oh, it's hot. What do you think is your biggest success in life so far? Biggest success in life is easily learning to love myself. Mm. That's really good. I, I, everything else is, that's just life. Those are the things of life. But learning to love who I am, be proud of who I am, come out despite the adversity that it caused and survive that, that's my biggest success. That's great. What would you say is your biggest perceived failure? Well, it's been the same, same answer if you ask the right person, <laughs> you know? Uh, I don't know. I don't really believe in failures. It's good. It's a good answer. Yeah, I don't. I, don't I, I can't think of one. I wouldn't be. Do I sometimes wish that I could have started my life earlier? Yeah. Sure. Uh, but I wouldn't be who I am today yeah, without I all agree. that. So. Yeah, that's why I use the word perceived failure yeah. because I I agree with you. I don't. I don't really think there's such thing as failure outside of giving up. Yeah. You know, but that's not failure. That's giving up. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. 
but as long as you just keep keep on keeping on keep on keeping you know, on i yeah. feel that um how much mental fortitude has it taken to get to where you are professionally um relationally vocationally mentally i think I mean, fortitude implies that I have am some like a strong person, which I think I am. But I wouldn't say that that's easy, or because I have some knowledge that everybody else doesn't. It's just you have only two choices: forward or not. Mm-hmm. And and so I feel like if I have mental fortitude for anything, it's to just continue to move forward and try to be better, or what I would perceive as better. Um, so yeah, I think, I think for all of us, I think any person, we all have a story and a journey, they're all different. And so I feel like any person, whatever they're facing, you know, making the decision to say, am I going to move forward today or not? Because those are the only options, like options I feel, you know, it's bitter or better. Um, and so... I would say that the mental fortitude to make that decision every day is it's just a superpower that we each have and we just have to decide to use it mm-hmm. you know it's just the superpower of perspective what am I going to do with this you know um, some days I don't have it yeah. I've definitely had dark days and dark times in my life so. sure you you mentioned you know it would have been nice if you could have kind of started your life sooner how, how can like the next generation the younger generation learn to get to that place sooner does that make sense yeah um because i'm the same way i didn't really kind of find myself till the last like 10 years yeah um i mean i think first of all like i should probably stop saying that <laughs> because there isn't a right time it's your time yeah Just, you know i think Obviously, my life is the way it is because it is. I was, you know, born into the family. I was born into uh, religion was a huge part of my life that had a lot to do with, um, you know, what started me late for, for, you know. And so, I think like that's where it's like I have to use the power of percept my my perception of what that means and and saying like it's not that I started late, but that this is my time. And maybe it feels late, but like that's society telling me that I'm old, which is bull****, you know, and so, you know, it's like, even now it's like a journey of discovering and feeling that way and reminding myself, and so, but I do think society is starting to change, I mean, more and more young people are free to be themselves, not that we don't still have a lot of, especially right now, it's a pretty, like, polarizing time in the world, Um, but, like, I feel, I, I mean, I didn't even hear the word lesbian growing up, I didn't know it wasn't a cool thing to say you go you know you're a strong independent woman you go queen you know that wasn't mm-hmm. like a, a a talk and so you know I think if anything the only thing I know how to do and the only thing I I personally feel strongly about is to just relentlessly and unapologetically be myself because mm-hmm. I always feel like if I could have just seen someone doing that mm-hmm. my whole life might be different yeah. not that I wish it was different but I hope that someone else's can be. Yeah. You know, yeah. That's good. Yeah. What advice can you give, speaking of the next generation, what advice can you give to the next generation, specifically of songwriters, musicians, entertainers, performers, um, like to kind of push them over the fence towards making a career out of art? Um, I, I know, like, in my own life, you know, I was golden handcuffs to, to the to our old jobs, you know what I mean? Because I felt I couldn't make enough money. Yeah. Or felt like there was no way to have a sustainable life doing this. Yeah. And the same thing, like I wish I wish I would have known earlier how I how I how I could do this thing. Yeah. Um, what what advice can you give to those that younger generation that's coming into the game? I mean I think that you know the first first thing is I go all the way back to the beginning of having the right people in your life and your circle in your corner yeah. you know, people that fill your cup people that don't don't bring you down uh, emotionally um, people believe in you like what is it you know all we need out of the people in our circle is what do you want to do cool I love it you can do it 
I got your back. It's not not much more than that, you know. Then, and um, I think the other thing that I think is a really valuable conversation I have often with people is that stop measuring success by the way that society measures success, because not everyone needs to be Taylor Swift. There, not everyone needs to be Clive Davis or whoever else is your icon. Um, you know, not everyone is in this industry has the same job. There are a lot of, there is a lot of space and plenty of space for all of us yeah. at different levels to do do it in the level that makes us the most happy, yeah. you know, and that me, and that fills our life the most. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe touring isn't for you and you want to be a songwriter. Maybe songwriting isn't for you and you want to play bars and be free without people telling you what to do. Maybe you want to be famous. Call the thing that you want and go after that without yeah. shame. Yeah. Um, because there's just so much maybe you don't even like singing there are song pluggers there are people that are managers there are people that are agent there are people that work for publishing deals there are people that run events there is so much space in our industry and and um you know i would just say think outside of the box stop letting someone tell you what what your success is supposed to look like mm, that's good that's a real good word that <laughs> preaches they amen. say amen amen thank you jesus <laughs> um now it's time for what's a goatee. What's a goatee? Sheena, what is what's a goatee? Like a like this. <laughs> what do you want to know about me? What you heard about me? Um, that's made me think of the meme where the dog is like, I think that you're really great, and I like your hair, and you're really friendly, and, and what do you like about me? <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about? No. Oh, man. What, what do I want to know about you? Tell me. Oh, this is great. Tell me why. Let me ask you some of my, my typical interview questions. Let's go. I'll give you my favorite one. Mm -hmm. Name. Tell me a song that changed your life. You heard it and it changed your life. Uh, it's not the crime by Tower of Power. Why? When I was in the fourth grade, um, my dad brought out his record player and put it in the kitchen, and uh, he put on that album. Uh, in specific, it's from an album called Urban Renewal, which came out in 1974, I think. And this was track number four on the record. It's called "It's Not the Crime." And my dad was like, yo, you want to hear something dope? And I was like, yeah. Did your dad say dope? No, 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 <laughs> no. Um, I, I mean, I could kind of see him saying that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could see it. I, I don't remember exactly what he said, but that was yeah. what he meant. That's what he meant. You want to hear something what dope? He, what he had meant was, this is really dope. And he played this song, and it starts with this horn line going, bum, bum, na, 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 bum, 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 na, na. Da, 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 da. It's like super dope, but I kept hearing this low end instrument and I was like, what is that? And my dad was like, that's a baritone saxophone. And I was like, I'm gonna play that that's instrument. That's your first instrument, isn't it? And it became my first instrument, yep. How often do you bring sax out? Uh, well, not since Hurricane Ian, um, cause I no longer have it. Um, uh, but, I would bring it out every now and again just to remind myself I could still play. Yeah, that's great. And then also remind myself why I stopped playing because <laughs> that instrument hurts to play. You hurt your mouth so bad. Yeah. Especially when you're out of practice. That's so, so funny. Um, but that song. Uh, I love that. This is the reason I play music to this day. Oh. I, I literally looked at my parents and I said, I want to play music for the rest of my life. Yeah. And I did. So yeah. there's. Other than when I moved to Colorado for a little bit, there's never been a time in my life that I wasn't playing music since I'm a kid. Yeah. So, that song. That's great. That's a great answer. Thank you. It's so specific. I was there with your dad. Y'all yeah. want to hear something dope? Yeah. Uh, uh, completely unrelated. I just, I, I think this is a fun story. Um, my friend Vanessa came over the other day and uh, she brought this one cat, this young cat with her. 
and he's like he's an aspiring musician and um <laughs> they were like hey can you know can we smoke a bowl and i was like yeah dude because laura was out of town so i was like you can smoke in the house and laura's not here you know what i mean and so i they were like oh do you have a bowl and i was like how you gonna ask me if we can smoke a bowl and then ask me if i have a bowl <laughs> but i was like yeah i got you so i went and i grabbed one and uh this kid takes a huge old rip out of it. He's like, man, this is a real nice bowl. I said, thanks, it's my dad. And he said, what? <laughs> and I said, you're smoking out of my dad. And he said, what do you mean? And I said, well, when my dad died and he was cremated, I had his ashes put into a, a bowl so that when I had sessions, like I could still smoke with my dad. And the kid, like so sweet, looks down at the bowl and goes, it's real nice to meet you. <laughs> oh, I love that, and man. That's the sweetest thing it's ever. The sweetest I was thing. Like that's so great. Anything else you want to know about me? Let's see. What do you have on the horizon after swimming with Swimmy? Wait, swimming with Swimmy. Swimmy goes swimming. Swimmy goes no, swimming. No, Slimmy goes swimming. <laughs> <laughs> Slimmy goes swimming. Um, well. Um, so, I got one thing I can't talk about. Okay. Um, but, uh, so I got a new record we're in pre-production for. A uh, little record, but it'll be my most, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, hmm. No, my most, like, ambitious. Hmm, most ambitious. <laughs> Um, the most ambitious. I was like, um, Nazi? Why does it want to be? Oh, no. Is <laughs> <laughs> oh, not, no. not looking for that? No, 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 this no, is no, good. no, no. Um, it's my most ambitious record yet. It's going to have the most people on it. And um, it's some music that is really, really personal to me. Okay. And um, in a way that my other music seems like it. It isn't now. Yeah. Like when I wrote that stuff, I was like, man, this is so personal to me. Yeah. But now I listen to it, I'm like, oh, what, what is this even yeah. about? And then I, you know, compare it to what I'm writing now, and I'm like, oh man, this is like I'm such an amateur. Um, but that's, I mean, always. Every time I listen to anything that I ever recorded, I'm like, oof. Um, but so I'm really excited about that. I'm working with Caleb to produce a. Um, a concert series uh, next year that'll be a year-long series with four 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 concerts one a one a quarter um, really excited about that um, professionally I, I'm, I'm in the middle of launching a new business and um, so that's exciting and um, I got this other thing that I am chomping at the bit to talk about but I can't talk about it yet um, but I'm really excited about that that's great so, you always have I got a lot of stuff going on you always have at least 10 things going on it's too much you're like an octopus it keeps me out of trouble octopus though octopusy you know that's my favorite uh, marine animal I did know that octopus I feel like you f***ing channel that mm -hmm. you do you always have your hands and stuff hey <laughs> what do you think your purpose in life is? I don't know. I mean, I feel like that's such an interesting question. Like, our purpose in life is to just live it and leave it better than we started. That's good. You know, I don't, I think that I feel passionate about uh, telling my story and encouraging other people to be themselves and live out loud. I, I mean, I feel passionate about that. And I think, you know, my purpose in life is, is I don't know, that feels loaded. That feels like an expectation of that I have to accomplish something when all I have to accomplish is leaving the world better than I found it or trying to. It's good. How do you feel like you're uniquely equipped to leave the world better. Yeah. 
acting contests. <laughs> no. Contests? <laughs> yep. How do you judge that? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, let me explain. No. Um, how am I uniquely equipped to leave the world better? I mean, I feel like because each of us are unique. Nobody's story is the same, even if you've been through the same thing. You know, I yeah. feel just my life's choices and decisions have led me right here to have this conversation with you and to film this just like whoever I meet next is I'm uniquely equipped for that moment mm. and like if I can hold on to that mentality too I'm never a failure yeah. I'm always in the right place yeah. I'm always succeeding that's good that's good I love it what's your greatest strength perspective mm. yeah I would, I would agree with that for you. Yeah. I love that about you. Also um, banging my wife. I'm really good at that. Yeah. <laughs> but who isn't good at banging your wife? You <laughs> know what I mean? <laughs> uh, what is love? Maybe it don't hurt me. Everybody has said that. <laughs> Everybody has. <laughs> Except for Jack Foster. That, that's, I mean, what is there another thing? What is love? Like legit? My yeah, real what answer? Is, what, what is, is love? Yeah. Love, real love. It's absolutely unconditional and has no expectations. Real love just says, I want you to be the best you, whatever that looks like. Yeah, I, That's real love in my opinion. Good. You think we're alone in the universe? I feel like it is um, absurd for me to pretend to know that answer or to, to act like I have any idea. If you had to guess, I what hope would you not. Guess? Yeah, me too. I hope not. I, I feel like the world is so vast and beautiful. How can this be the only one like it? Yeah. Um, but I, I have no clue. Yeah. That's good. What are you afraid of? I don't know. I used to say mediocrity. But I don't feel like that's a thing anymore. I guess I'd be afraid of uh, being stunted, no longer growing, no longer learning. I'm afraid, you know, I'd be, uh, uh, you know, losing myself maybe, which I, I have definitely been through the ups and downs of that and been there and found myself again. So I don't know, I mean, loss maybe. It's always hard to lose people. Yeah. Yeah. Man. I feel like we gotta pick it up again. So now it's time for a segment called Does the Water Seem a Little Bit Warmer Right Here All of a Sudden? Did you pee in the water? I, I haven't stopped peeing in the water since That's we got in here. No surprise to me. Yeah, no. I, um, I, I, honestly, I take in the pool sometimes. I think one time um, you shit in the car when we were driving. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm just not unprepared for these situations. Yeah, you you have unfortunately toured with a bunch of dudes. I have heard gross. your <laughs> slapping against couches from the other room. <laughs> not a lot faces me anymore, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> my poor bandmates have so many stories about my it's, yeah. it's amazing. Um, anyway, before we sign off, you got anything you want to plug? Anything you want to push? Oh, man. You know, artists are now grown on on social media. Go follow me on social media. Where and, do they uh, find you? Uh, you can go to my website at sheenabrook.com, and all my links are there so you can find your poison. Um, but I'm on Spotify and all that stuff, and let's hang out. Leave me a comment. Let's have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah, she's very interactive on there, much better than me. Thank um, you for saying that because I think I suck at it. No, you're great. I, every <laughs> time I see your stuff, I'm like, man, I wish I can't. I just. You got to find the thing that makes you. I feel good about what I post. Yeah. And I try to only post things that sound fun to me, whether no one watches them or 10 yeah. people watch them, you know. I got to get good at it or at least got to hire somebody that's good at it. You saying that as you like literally film an entire media content <laughs> show is pretty funny. Touche, touche. somebody to follow me around filming content while I film content. <laughs> I actually do need someone to follow me around and film comment, content if anybody wants to do that. 
That's why I think I'm just gonna. Yeah. I think yeah. I'm gonna just start carrying one of these GoPros with me and just Set vlog. Yeah, I know should. it's so late. You know, it's so 20 years ago, but. I, I want to try to bring everything that's not cool anymore. <laughs> we'll just start bringing that. Shit yeah, back. dude. Ear cam. An ear cam. Ear cam. What is an ear cam? Where the GoPro just the view of your plug hole. Oh, that's so actually funny. Uh, Meta makes glasses. I met the guys that made that at one of the Bose bad. conventions. The the Ray Bans, the little little lens. Oh yeah, we'll give them sponsors. Let's see if they'll want to sponsor yeah, us. You, we mentioned it. Surely they're gonna. See Surely. This. Shout out Ray Bans. They literally have been like, we really like you. Your following is so small. Sorry, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love Which you respect. so much, Sheena. You I love you. Are one of my oldest and truest and very best friends. Um, we have absolutely been through thick and thin together and we are still standing and standing taller than ever for that matter yeah. and uh, we're still making music together and we're yeah. still yeah. we're still doing the thing and uh, I can't tell you how how grateful I am for that so um, that's it for Sheena and me thank you all for hanging out in this episode of Whatever, Slimmy Go Swimming, whatever. Swimming with Slimmy. Swimming with sli Slimming. Swimming, swimming with Slimmy. Slimming with Swim. Whatever swims. it is. We're going to swim. We're going to go yeah. make some waves and catch and race. Yeah. So, oh, don't say. Oh. Peace out, mo. You can jump back in, yeah. Water is fine. With a fool in a pool, you in a two beside. And take all your words and all your strife as you talk about this Gulf Coast life. Never go swimming Southwest for the living You lose all your clothes And all your inhibitions It's Slimmy go swimming